Hey guys, Frank here. Hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is the SNES. Uh, still fully working with a great picture. It's playing a little bit of Paradise at the moment. Um, you may see the the pick chip on top of the SNES. Yep. This video, I'm going to be installing the Super Sick mod to this SNES. So yeah, stick around, and we'll crack on with that. Okay, so time to get in this SNES, but first, remember, we need to power cycle it, get rid of that excess power. There you go, there it was. Um, what I'm going to do now is get inside this and get down to the motherboard. I'm not going to show that, I've already shown that in the first video where I repaired this SNES. So yeah, I'll get this all apart, we'll get down to the motherboard, and we'll crack on with installing that super sick. Okay, let's take care of the hard part first. We've got to lift some pins on PPU1 and PPU2. Now if we look at PPU1, on the bottom row here we have to lift pin 24 and on PPU2 we have to lift pin 30. Now if you take a look, what I've done is I put a black mark next to the pin that needs to be lifted. Now the way I do it is I come along with my soldering iron, I touch show you this what I do it is I come along and I touch the very bottom of the pin like this at the same time I'll have a pin as you can see it's got a little hook on it I put a little hook on it that I can use to snag the pin and lift it up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get those two pins lifted and then we can move on Okay, that's both pins lifted on both PPUs. Pin 24 has been lifted on PPU 1 and pin 30 has been lifted on PPU 2. If I tilt the board, hopefully you'll be able to see it a little bit better. There we go, hopefully you can see those lifted pins. What I need to take care of now is the lockout chip. Okay. What I need to do now is deal with the lockout chip. Now there's two ways of dealing with this. You can either leave the lockout chip on there and lift some pins and then you can solder to the pads where the pins used to be or you can completely remove the lockout chip. Now I go for the latter. I'm going to remove it. It just makes life a lot easier. So yeah, I'm going to fire up my hot air. I'm going to get some aluminium foil around these components and then I'm going to get this lockout chip off the board. What I've done is I've masked off the surrounding area around the lockout chip. The reason I've done that is because there's components around here really close to it and I really don't want to hit them with heat and uh, cause a, a problem so I've just masked off around the lockout chip. What I'm going to do now is get my hot air onto this thing and um, we'll get removing this lockout chip so okay that's the lockout chip removed here it is bye bye not needed anymore um, what I did was I obviously came along with my art here removed the lockout chip I got some desoldering braid and just went over the pads to to clean them up and make them look really nice uh, it actually looks like that chip was never on there um, but yeah, that's the two most difficult parts over, lifting these two pins and removing the lockout chip. What I can do now is get on with the rest of the mod, so I'm going to crack on with that. What I want to do now is program the PIC 16F630 with the super sick code. As you can see, I've got it in my EEPROM burner. I've got my EEPROM burner software ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I've already selected the PIC 16 F630 just here. What I need to do now is open the file and as you can see it's this bottom one super sick lock because obviously we're replacing the lockout chip in the SNES so I'm going to open that and I'm going to select Intel hex or code and we're going to push okay 
and what I want to do is just check my fuses if it's set them properly and it has so yeah I'm ready to program this I'm going to hit the program button what I'll do is I'll point down to the EPROM programmer and let you see it program the chip there you go it's programmed and there we go program successful so what I'm going to do now is just do a verify just to double check and there we go it's successful so yeah that's programmed the pick with the super sick code you can get this in our SNES now so okay I have all the components I need to perform the mod I've already gone ahead and programmed the sick code to the pick chip and I've got the rest of the parts ready so I can perform the mod. So yeah, let's crack on with it. I've just spent five minutes preparing the pick chip. What I've done is I've spread the pins out, I've trimmed them down, and I've come along and put a blob of solder on each pin. Um, it just sets it up and gets it ready for when I want to solder wires to this thing. It just makes it more easier. So yeah, let's get this in the SNES. So that's my 10K pull-up resistor all wired in. What I need to do now is just crack on and install the rest of the super sick mod. So what I'll do is I'll get that pick chip all soldered in and once I've done we'll come back and have a look at it. So I've got the pick chip on top of the CPU ready to be wired in. Um, don't worry about the CPU overheating, it won't. In fact the pick chip on top will act more like an heat sink. So um, yeah, what I'm going to do now is get this all wired in and once that's done I'll let you have a look at that. There we go, that's the super sick installed. As you can see, it replaces the block out chip and it also controls the 5060 Hertz. What I want to do now is remove the old LED because obviously we're going to be putting in our own, which indicates what function the super sick is in so yeah what i need to do is remove the solder and just take out this led as you can see the old led has been removed all i did was just desolder it with my solder pump and then just grab the top of the led and just pulled it through uh, and it came straight out what i can do now is wire in our new multicolor LED and I'll show you what that looks like once I've done okay that's our new LED installed as you can see it's a multi-function multicolor LED um, we need that so we can uh, know what um, function the super sick is in um, this is a common cathode LED uh, if you look the center leg goes down to the actual ground point of the old connector now what I've done is I've had a quick connect to it, you know, it's just in case I want to um, take this out or strip down the SNES, I don't have to uh, keep taking, uh, desoldering things so I can just come along with my quick connect and, and, you know, plug it in and if I ever want to take it apart I'll just come along and take it out. So yeah, that's our new LED installed, let's get this all back together and give it a test. As you can see, we're partially back together. I have Super Mario World in the cartridge slot. Now, I wanna give it a quick test and I'm gonna know uh, fairly quick if this is a successful install or not. Now, don't forget, this chip now takes over the function of the lockout chip what was here. So if this is not wired in correctly, then um, the, the lockout portion is not gonna work and the system's not gonna boot. 
Now, the opposite is going to happen if we get a successful install. Obviously, this is going to take the place as the lockout chip. Uh, and if it works, we should get a, a boot. So what I'm going to do now is power on and see if we get Super Mario World. And we do. So we've got a successful install. Brilliant. Now, if we take a look at the image, you can see borders. Uh, that's telling me that it's in... 50 hertz mode. Now if I hold the reset switch and cycle it till it gets to red, there you go, that switches the mode and that uh, converts it to 60 hertz. Now you can see flickering, that's natural, that's Super Mario World, the PAL version of Super Mario World does not like being in 60 hertz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to green and that goes back to 50 hertz and as you can see it's perfectly fine. So yeah, that's a successful, super sick install. So what I'm gonna do is get the system all back together and then I can wrap up the video. Nice, we got a super sick snares. <laughs> Focus, there you go. <laughs> okay, what I wanna do is show you how the auto mode works on a super sick. Now, I want to show you a PAL game running and an NTSC game running. Now obviously I've had to leave the top off because obviously an NTSC game won't fit in a cartridge slot. But yeah, what I want to show you is the super sick running in auto mode. Now when you're in auto mode the light is orange uh, and what that will do is the super sick will detect what region the cartridge is and it will set up the console for that region so obviously this is power region so it's going to set the console up for 50 hertz so if i power on you'll see that i'm in auto and the console will start in 50 hertz and we can see that because we've got the borders now what i can do is show you if i change there that's change the video mode to 60 hertz so i've overrid the auto mode um, what I'm going to do is go, just go back to auto. There we go, we're back to auto. And as you can see, it's gone back to PAL. So what I'm going to do now is exactly the same, but I'm going to show you an NTSC game. Now, okay, I have an NTSC game in there now. Now what the Super Sick will do in its auto mode is it will recognize this as NTSC and it will set the console to 60 Hz. So if I power on, hopefully, you should see the game boot in 60 hertz, and you, I can tell it's 60 hertz because uh, my camera's flickering and we've got no borders. So what I'll do is I'll switch over to PAL. There we go, switch over to PAL. Now, as you can see, we've got borders now. There you go, there's the borders. So that's uh, set it into PAL mode. Let's just get past this little bit of an intro, and I'll set it back to auto, and you'll see it go back to NTSC. As you can see, we're still in PAL. So what I'll do is I'll go back to auto mode, which is there, and it changes back to NTSC. So that's how the Super Sick works in auto mode. It can detect what region the console, uh, the cartridge is, and set the console up accordingly. So okay, we're all back together. Let's power on. I'm in auto mode and I've got a PAL game, so. It should start up in 50 hertz, and it has. I can see straight away it has, because we've got no flicker. And uh, yeah, if I ever want to override that, I can just hold the button, and it goes red. Let go. It will change it to 60 hertz. Yeah, the PAL version of Super Mario World does not like playing in 60 hertz. So yeah, if this is an NTSC game, I could hold the button until it went green, let go. And as you can see, we're back in PAL mode. But what I always do is just leave it in auto. So yeah, there you go guys. Hope you like this video. We super sicked uh, a SNES. Please give it a big thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Fucking sick, super sick. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Picture looks great as well, nice, decent modded. Yay! 